Hello friends, uh, welcome to the second module of uh, this course. We have already seen in the first module what a network looks like, the layers or the components and, and how the work is divided into components, what is the job of every layer or every component and we have seen that they, they together help us in sending our information to and fro. Okay. In this particular module, we will be delving deeper now okay, and we will be learning about the protocol suite and the model itself. We have briefed about TCP IP model in the previous module and we have briefed uh, a bit about how the information is flowing, but here we will be doing in a little more detail. Okay. The TCP IP protocol stack is, is seen on the screen, you can see that. Uh, okay. The top most or the lap most here is, is called application layer where you can have SMTP is something which is used for sending a mail and receiving a mail. FTP is used for sending and receiving a file. Uh, HTTP is something which we often use for is basically a browser with web server uh, kind of a communication you use H H HTTP. So, these are basically application layers okay. SMTP is an application layer, FTP is an application layer, there are many many application layers. Okay. For every application we have that layer okay. and for the transport layer, remember the job of an application layer is to talk to application and get that information passed to the transport layer. The job of a transport layer to send it to the recipient. Now, a transport layer we have three different type of services, you can run TCP, you can run UDP okay. and what is the difference, we will look at the difference. So, you, you have the choice, you can have TCP or UDP, in most conventional machines you have these two protocols, these two choices available to you and there is a third choice called uh, stream control transport protocol or SCTP that also is available, but is not available to most of the computers. So, I am not stressing on SCTP, but you will again find some discussion on SCTP on and, and the reference to my second book on um, data communication and networking. So, and you can see that the network layer we do not have a choice, only IP is the is the choice available to us, we do not have any other choice. And last two, data link as well as physical says any. Now, this, this is basically a TCP IP model and when it say any, what does that mean? That means that anything will work, but you need something, okay. you need something to deliver, IP is available, IP is decides that this is the next router whom I am going to send, but how that thing is sent, I, I do not care. So, any, any means I do not care. Okay. I have an Ethernet card which provides a wire transfer, or I use a wireless card will provide me a wireless transfer, if I use uh, my mobile and use an ISP based 2G, 3G, 4G kind of um, a layer uh, for sending that data across, I do not care. Okay. So, any, any means I do not care for last two operations, framing it and sending it across at the other end, making sure it is all the errors are, are removed and all that, this two things, okay. error handling flow control that is that uh, is done by data link layer and sending the bits across by converting them into bits, uh, that converting them into signals, uh, the physical layer job, how that is done I do not care, I am only concentrating on four layers application transport, sorry three layers application transport and network layer or SMTP, FTP all that this application, TCP, UDP or SCTP that is the transport layer and IP the network layer. So, that is it. Okay. The TCP IP protocol stack is shown on the right side, if you look at the right up the left hand side is basically a vertical thing and you can match everything with the other. So, application is matching with SCTP and all that, transport matching with TCP. Uh, UDP and SCTP and uh, network matching with IP and the b last two matches with any. Okay. So, let us talk about uh, the data link and the physical layer, they are usually found together. So, if you get a card, an Ethernet card or a wireless card or anything or, or in, in a Wi-Fi adapter that you get uh, in your uh, smartphones, they contain both data link layer as well as the physical layer functionality together. 
Let me remind you data link layers functionality is to make sure the data is transferred in error free form with flow control. Okay, so, sender does not swim the receiver and physical layers job is to convert those bits into signals and at the other end from signals back to bits. Okay. So, the first thing that you come across are called LAN adapters or, or, or wireless adapter, wired adapters, ethernet cards, these are all different names given to this data link and physical layer devices. Okay. And in, in some books, you will find that TCP IP model application transport network layer below that you have host to network interface kind of. Okay. So, these are different words used to describe the same thing basically it is something which provides data link as well as physical layer connection uh, uh, functionality. But the word connection has two different meanings and I would like to stress that thing right now. Okay. One is called physical connection. For example, now the word physical is very critical here because it does mean something which is intangible. Let me give you an example. If I, I, I take a laptop and uh, an ethernet cable and just plug that thing, I have physical connection on a wired network. So, that is one example of physical connection. But if I do not do that, I connect to a Wi-Fi using my laptop, the very laptop that I, I connected using a wired I, I still have that physical connection. This is not physical in true sense, but in networking parlance is still called a physical connection, which connects me to uh, the router. Okay. If I use my mobile to connect to my ISP using 2G or 5G or 4G, whatever connection that I have, that is again called a physical connection. So, physical connection comes in two different forms, wired and wireless. So, that is physical connection. The logical connection is little different. A logical connection is about connecting after connection establishment process. If that happens, it is called connection oriented connection. If that does not happen, it is called connectionless. I have described that in the previous model. Okay, so the sender says, okay, I would like to send you something and uh, do you accept? The other party says, yes, I will and then you start sending it is connection oriented approach. In that case, you will have to terminate the connection as well at the end. At the end, you say that I do not no more data to send, please terminate this connection. The other party responds back, yes, I uh, will. So, that is how the connection oriented connection happens. The connection less connection, as I said, is very analogous to SMS. You have pumped data in without really knowing, will reach to sender, uh, will reach to receiver. Okay. So, connection oriented connection and connection less connection are two different types of connections. Connection less connection seems little ironic, but you can now understand. Connection less connection is basically a physical connection is there. Okay. So, that is why it is connection, but is connection less in the sense of logical meaning you do not establish connection beforehand before sending. So, that is why it is called connection less connection. Connection oriented connection has one big advantage. When I, I tell the other end, I would like to send you something, are you ready and the other party says, yes, I am ready, I can actually elaborate my requirements. I say, I will be sending you data quite fast, 1.5 MB per second, will you be able to accept? Now, I am not only telling that I want a connection, but I am specifying my quality of service requirement. And I want to send a video, I like to download a video and I want that connection to provide me that service. So, connection oriented connection can additionally provide that thing. In connection less connection, I cannot because I am not establishing connection, I am not asking anything to the other end, I cannot come to any sort of conclusion, sort of agreement about what I am going to do and whether the other party is ready. In fact, uh, connection oriented connection is also possible when there are multiple routers around. You can tell each and every router in the path to say, okay, will you be able to provide me 1.5 MB bandwidth sustained? Can you free your resources for 5 minutes for which I am going to do this? And the router says, yes, I can, you can accept that router. And if the router says, no, you will pick up some other router along the path and choose the path which provides you that service. Once you do that, you can guarantee that service to the application layer. And that is why this, it can handle this quality and it provides that consistent service throughout. Once it is there, it will consistently provide it. Okay. One problem with connection less connection is that when there are a lot of people sending, when there is a calamity and everybody starts sending 
calling other sending data and will not be able to come uh, connect to anybody because it just it cannot work okay so connection oriented in fact if you have made a call you already a connection is established you won't have any problem but newer people who would like to connect will not be in a position to now that is something which is not observed in internet if you are connected and somebody else can start downloading all of us will start having slow data connection okay that's a problem because anybody can connect here it is not so that's the advantage you have to pre book because connection established process has to carry it out pre booking will not be done if there is there are no resources okay so that is the difference here if the router goes down the other, the downside of it all connections passing through it will go down because that we have decided that the connection will pass through that router if the router goes down all packets pass through the same path and will have that problem remember uh, the internet has decided uh, the connection less delivery mechanism exactly for this problem so if the router goes down the previous router has the autonomy to decide some other route so that is power uh, of connection less and tcp ip provides best of the best of both the worlds actually so it provides connection oriented service tcp provides connection oriented service ip provides connection less delivery so is is a very clever design uh, that i must say okay in case of connection oriented uh, service complete path is decided before data is being sent okay and once that is done it is called circuit switching everybody is connected okay so you have that connection it's quite analogous to a, a a phone a landline phone when you call somebody the physical connection is established to the receiver even if you do not call the light is, line is occupied and you 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 will be paying for it so you will be paid for time and not the volume of data that you send so that is called circuit switching so circuit is occupied when the connection is established circuit is occupied only when the connection is released the circuit is removed so that is a physical connection from sender to receiver uh, unlike that the sms suppose you send an sms to a friend will go to the first base station from first base station to the second send second to third third to fourth now you are not occupied once you send an sms to the base first station you are relieved and your connection is over from this first base station to the second one the second to third and so on so the connection less the advantage is that you are no longer occupied the line is only occupied for the data transfer and otherwise it is not okay so that is packet switching okay no path is reserved in advance actually but third approach you know that this is going to be the path but you don't do anything additional you don't establish physical connection between all these intermediaries tcp ip follows this approach tcp ip what does it do it will re remember this and will have an entry but there is no physical connection okay so connection is not established but you know that who is the next uh, when you route you know who is the next router who is the next router and all that okay that is called virtual circuit switching why is called virtual circuit switching because it looks like circuit switching you the sender for example a browser assumes that it is it is a direct connection to the web server or or an ftp client assumes that or or gets the feeling that it is connected to the ftp server it is not actually so and that's why it's called virtual we already looked at layers and services and we are throwing some more light on it okay for example we have seen that last two layers you you can use an ethernet card or whatever and the tcp ip model does not really bother about how those services are provided okay two services framing okay you construct a frame of data add actually you will have to add the header as well as error handling data and all that so you you do that so that is framing and sending data across using signal so that is done the ip okay okay so these two layers the data link and physical above that we have an ip what does ip do decide the next immediate neighbor send packs packets to next immediate neighbor tcp provides connection oriented service so it'll send a packet to the other end for connection establishment request when only when it gets the response back it'll start sending but then you have a choice you can you can omit tcp you can start using udp if you need okay when you need we'll talk about okay applications like dns domain name system we'll look at that in the application layer we'll use udp instead and basically this model is shown as shown in the on, on the slide every layer provides some services to the higher layer every layer takes some service from the layer beneath okay 
internet architecture is is from a user's perspective is very simple everybody feels that you are connected to internet is like a cloud of some some sort you don't know what is it but then you know that others are also connected to it and if you want to talk to anybody you just pump your data in and i'll reach to the other how we don't really know how that happens okay so that's our users view but actual view is this okay internet is made up of collection of many many routers and these routers help us deliver our packet to the destination okay so this is the actual view and if you have understood this probably you will be able to understand many other things that comes later okay so users perspective is different than the actual perspective and that is the reason why you will have to handle problems in a transparent way so users don't realize okay so if if the for example a router goes down the user won't need to worry about a line goes down or a router is router starts malfunctioning or router starts dropping packets and so on and so forth but you don't really know your, your own vision does not involve routers so you don't really have anything to do with these things okay and how these things are provided is the theme of this particular course we'll be learning about all this okay the role of each layer in communication now if you want to really understand how this thing functions i've already talked about but now let us take a typical example to make sure you understand the function of every layer in serious detail now try to see or understand what's happening here uh, uh, look at this slide uh, you can see that there is a sender and it runs something okay it's called tcp ip stack which contains five different layers that we talked about the receiver also contains that and there are two routers in between there may be 20 routers in between the discussion is not going to change okay so please understand that this is only a sample uh, in this thing image okay it can be 10 can be 20 routers in between okay and you can see that ip connects to networks okay so here you can see that there is so the application layer here the sender sender for example is typing a url that url is given to the transport layer the transport layer gives it to the ip beneath the ip construct uh, decides that it is to be sent to this network okay this network this router how it decides based on the routing table information it decides that and then it tells the data link layer to construct a frame and send it across to this network this network okay this router so data link layer once does that will deliver it to the physical layer physical layer convert those bits into small pieces okay signals okay and those signals travel here this physical layer accept those signals convert them into bits and give it to data link layer those bits are collected at data link layer and the data link layer understands it to be a frame and check whether the frame is intact it contains data intact um, and there is there are no errors you know if it is the case it will pass it on to the network layer this network layer again will decide who is the next recipient is now please understand that higher layers are not used in the intermediaries because the network layer itself is going to decide who the next recipient is so we'll come here the url okay the, the url is is being sent here this network layer decides that this next router is this the router number 2 well uh, okay and then we we'll construct a new frame pass it on to the physical layer and that this physical layer send it to this physical layer now it is quite possible that this particular connection from this sender to the first router is wired from first router to second router may be wireless and from second router to the third may be again wired okay so every time a different frame is to be constructed and sent eventually when this physical layer receives that frame will pass on to the data link layer will turn pass that to network layer network layer realizes that is my own i am the receiver so i'll pass it on to the transport layer now these transport layer get the message that this transport layer has sent the url which is obviously being embedded in transport layer header so it will send the acknowledgement back in the same manner okay to this transport layer at this point of time this transport layer understands that this url is received by the web server now this transport layer or tcp provides this information to application layer okay 
the web server. Now, the web server generates a response and use the same process to send it back to the application layer. Okay. So, this is the role of IP in interconnecting. So, you can see that every router, the network layer decides who is, who is next. So, role of IP is very critical in, in deciding this. Okay. So, that is um, the point here. But then peers required to talk to each other. You can see that physical layers, two physical layers need to talk to each other. Okay, I, an Ethernet card is sending a frame, this Ethernet card should receive that frame and should be able to understand what is being sent. Okay, if the first is destination address, the here the frame should also understand it to be destination address and not the customer's frame. So, that is uh, the physical layers problem. Data link layer similarly has to do it. Okay, so if for a uh, sorry physical layer when it sends a signal understand this receiver must understand the signal for example is sending plus 5 volt the receiver should understand to be 1 okay and minus 5 should understand 0 if that is the case they should be able to communicate when a frame level it is data link layers job a data link layer should be able to talk to this data link layer in a way that a frame is being sent to the data link layer at this end must be able to clearly perceive what uh, are the contents of that frame okay so that is you know, I have already told you if there is an error, then it should take an appropriate action. Okay. Network layer also needs communication between peers. Anyway, I discussed that thing because when whenever there is a routing process, every network layer talks to the next immediate routing uh, network layer or, or the router. So, this network layer uh, you need this kind of interaction. In fact, every one needs. The transport layer also, TCP to TCP, I have already told you the sender's TCP talks to the other TCP. If the data is received in tag, it is fine. If it is not, it will uh, received, it will send an acknowledgement. So, it will understand that the data is received. If it is not, again, it will send the information back and the, the receiver will, uh, the sender will be able to, will resend that called retransmission. We have already seen that. So, that is about trans, uh, this thing and when we talked about the client server communication is basically two peers of application layer communicating with each other. I have already discussed that all I am not stressing that thing more. The, the process which is carried out in making sure two peers communicate is called a protocol which I, I mentioned that thing in the previous module. Okay. Application layer protocols are quite uh, readable. For example, if you are using an FTP, you know the commands that you provide and the other end, uh, what are the commands which uh, the other end uh, is going to respond with. So, if you type ls, you know what you are typing. When you get the list of files, you know exactly know what it is. So, these are very readable, but other layers also communicate TCP to TCP also communication uh, is done, you IP to IP is done. It is not all that readable fashion because it is not for us, it is for those entities to talk to each other. So, that, that is a protocol. The next, uh, uh, okay. there are some analogy that are provided on the next slide. For example, is, is kind of protocol is, is, is like something that you often do. For example, you uh, meet your friend in the morning, say hi Bhushan, good morning, uh, that is your protocol. And I would respond back, okay, hi, yes, I am fine, that is the response. So, it is not only about two entities talking, but the sequence of also, a sequence of uh, message exchange also is very critical. So, the, uh, the sender sends, good morning, the other party says, I am fine, kind of um, a communication. Okay. So, there are a few communication, uh, some protocols that we use in day to day life is also shown. Uh, some basic features of the protocol are shown on the next slide. Uh, first thing, there are multiple parties involved. There are some senders, some receivers. In some cases, there are multiple senders and multiple receivers, but usually there are two guys, uh, two parties. One is sending, other is receiving. And, and uh, let me tell you this: uh, the many a times I use word sender and receiver, and in my book also you will find word sender and receiver. But then both parties are sending at the same point of time and receiving at the same point of time is also possible. So, a better word uh, is, is, is initiator and responder, but that will usually adding one more uh, complexity to this already complex problem. So, I am not doing it. So, when I say sender is the person who is initiating and receiver is a person who is responding, but then after that anybody can send at any point of time and the other parts he can respond. So, that is the point here. Okay. So, the protocol act usually begins with an introduction of some sort and then both of them go to their own business, they talk to each other and uh, complete the job. Okay. 
and the protocol is about not only about what to send but in which sequence as well and we will soon see an example uh, okay. For example, uh, mm, a packet size a sender and receiver agree on the packet size that I will I'll be sending uh, for example, um, only 1500 bytes of data and the other end will agree that okay, that is called maximum transferable unit that normally network layers agree. So, that is also possible uh, okay. So, basically a feature protocol can even provide that okay. There is one example that uh, are shown on the screen there is the first line says S colon 220 is a message that uh, uh, the sender is sending. Uh, the server actually is sending uh, when you uh, communicate when a mail client talks to a mail server this is usually the first line that you receive okay it says glsict.org ready i am server says i am glsict.org and i am ready the client responds back with hello and the name of uh, itself okay you the first part which is not embedded in uh, this thing the the braces is what server sends and what comes later is the explanation that I have provided. And you can see that there is a typical sequence going on client is sender is sending something the client is sender sending back something it says ma mail from Bhushan and says fine I, I the sender is not blacklisted I can accept mails from him said mail to viral dot glsict.org that also is fine and I said mail to kanu dot glsic dot org and said I, I, I do not know who this guy is and that is equally fine and after that actually this is a, a very long uh, process we have not described that process completely here. So, that uh, in this protocol you probably have seen that there is a sequence and what server sends in the beginning is very clear that I will be sending 220 what the client respond back is also very clear. So, there is a clearly designed and defined sequence of operations. Last few slides talk about some of the uh, standardization bodies uh, used uh, uh, for defining things in networking and I would not be discussing them here, but you can read that thing from the website or handout or, or, or the books that I have given you as a reference. Because I, there is nothing logical about there are standardization bodies like uh, IEEE for example, is, is something which provides uh, standardization for Ethernet and other cards or the physical and data link layer they standardize. IETF or Internet Engineering Task Force provides standardization for the higher and top, top part. Um, it, it provides standardization for TCP, IP and even the application layer protocols like SMTP and all that. So, if, if, if you design a new routing algorithm for, for example, and you would like um, uh, world to use it you will have to get it registered to ITF and ITF approves your um, uh, routing uh, that thing that will be uh, it will act as a standardization standardized uh, routing algorithm and people may start using it and that, that is what people have done actually. So, and there are other uh, standardization bodies for example, ITU is one more international telecommunication union which provides uh, uh, standards like uh, standards for 4G, 3G and all that which we use for uh, communication. So, there are many standardization bodies doing their specific bit of job which are described and, and is available. So, you may read that part yourself uh, and let me summarize what we have seen in this particular module. We have started from at the TCP IP model and we have seen what uh, uh, what is available at each layer. Okay. We started with uh, what is available at application layer like SMTP, FTP and all that we have seen uh, the transport layer we have TCP. UDP and SATP we have uh, at the network layer we have IP and the other two layers we can have anything okay. that is the model and we have looked at each one of them and we have looked at the complete communication process we have looked at how data is being sent and received at the other end. With that note uh, we conclude this module thank you.